Okay, so hopefully I'm doing this right and you guys can all see me, see the screen, and can hear me. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep going on with chapter 15 practice problems and then we'll go into 16. There's not too many left, guys. We are almost there and almost done. So, um, there's a little bit of light at the end of that tunnel. Okay, so 38 is asking... Oh, let me zoom out so you guys can take a screenshot of the page. Ah, and there we go. Okay. So 38 is asking which of the following reactions would give the product or products indicated in substantial amounts. And what they mean by that is greater than 50% yield. So basically these two products need to at least give a 50% yield. So if we look at our NH2 here, Remember that these are all Friedel-Crafts reaction. So, since they're all Friedel-Crafts reaction, remember that 1 and 2 will not occur. It was one of those weird things about Friedel-Crafts. Friedel-Crafts cannot undergo the reaction if an NH2 is bonded to the benzene ring or we have a strong meta deactivator. I know that's kind of confusing, but basically the NH2 is such a strong activator that it will act as a base. So... That is why one and two are already out of the picture. So now we need to look at three and we see that there's nothing on the ring. So because we're doing a Friedel Crafts sub um Friedel Crafts reaction, and this is going to be a alkylation, not an acylation, because we do not have an acetyl group present. Um remember that we could bond it anywhere on this benzene ring. So basically, this guy isn't going to be our it will not yield 50% or more because remember we could substitute it anywhere on this ring because there is nothing hindering us from bonding it anywhere we want. So that and we could undergo poly substitution as well so we could have multiple products for this one. So the correct answer for this is none of these choices. Okay. And since this is a recording, feel free to pause me or go back to listen to it if I went too fast for you guys. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get these I'm trying to get through these questions pretty fast so then you guys don't have to sit here for like an hour trying to listen to the recording. Um, but yeah, okay. So next it's asking what would we expect to be the major product? Notice how he says major product, not products or whatever, obtained from the following reaction. All right, so this one's a little confusing because we do have two benzene rings. So what I always do for these questions is that I will go in and split the benzenes. So I would split it right here. And the reason why I split it here is because now this is one benzene ring and then this one is another. So you basically split the substituent that is on the benzene ring in half. So then each one gets one substituent. Okay. This here is, once again, a Friedel craft, and it's an alkylation. So let's go back to our two rings and look what's bonded on them. So if we look at the one on the left, we have a carbonyl group, meaning this guy is going to be a meta deactivator. Are we allowed to do a Friedel Crafts reaction if we have a meta deactivator bonded to the ring? No, we cannot. So we know we cannot bond anything to this side. This side cannot have anything bonded to it. So you could go ahead and go through the questions. I mean, the answer choices and mark off all the ones that we can't do. So one is out, two is out, three is out. Now we look over here on this ring we have an NH group, which we do know is a ortho para activator. So since it's an ortho para activator, we can go forward with our reaction. So remember, go ahead and draw in your arrows if you need to. And there we go. So now we just have to find one of the answer choices that has it, that has the CH3 bonded ortho para to this NH group. So here, as you guys can see, this one is bonded meta because this is bonded one, three. So that is not the answer. 
meaning that leaves us with five as our answer. And if you notice, one, four, so they are bonded para. So the answer for this is E. Okay, so once again, this is another one of those questions, but pay careful attention. So we see the ALCL3, this guy here is going to be our reagent as well. So these two are our reagents. This is the group that we're adding on to the benzene. So is this a Friedel-Craft acylation or alkylation? If you said acylation, you are 100% correct. This is going to be a Friedel-Craft and alpyl acyl, just for short. So we do the same thing. We go over to our two rings split it in half. If we look over here, the ring on the left has an NO2 group. The NO2 is another meta deactivator. The ring on the right has an alkyl group, which is a CH3 in this case, and that means this guy is an ortho para activator. So, Remember, it's a Friedel Crafts reaction, so we will not be able to do the reaction if we have a strong deactivator. So we know we cannot bond anything to the left ring. So go ahead and go through them. Two, we cannot do. Three, we cannot do. Four, we cannot do. So now we are stuck between one and five. So we want it to be ortho para to this guy. So it could bond here, here, or here. So if we look at one, we do have it bonding ortho to it. So we have a one, two. And then if we look over here, notice how we have a one, three. One, three is meta again. So our answer here is one, meaning our answer is A. Sorry, I'm trying to keep consistent. I just realized I did not give you guys time to screenshot this, so I'm going to go back. I'll let you screenshot this page. Sorry, I already did the next problem. <gasps> I'm really bad at this whole let you guys screenshot before I go. Okay, hopefully you guys had enough time to screenshot that. Before I do 42, I'm going to let you guys take a screenshot of this full page. <laughs> Okay, we should be good. All right, so let me go ahead and do 42, and I will let you guys screenshot the answer to this one after. Okay, so it is asking what might be predicted to happen when the following substance undergoes Friedel Crafts acylation. So, key words to note is that we are saying we are doing a Friedel Crafts reaction, and all he means by what might be predicted to happen is where would the substitution occur? That's typically what he means by these questions. So, once again, we look at our two rings. If we look at ring A, we have a deactivating meta group, meaning we have a strong deactivator again. So we know nothing can be bonded to ring A. So we can mark out all the questions, I mean all the answers that say it, the substitution will occur on ring A. So, we can mark out B and we can mark out C. B, ring B, has this guy here, which in, is called a methylene group, and it is going to be an ortho para activator. So in case you don't know what methylene group is, basically it just means that it's an alkyl group. That's it. So since we know it's an ortho para activator, we would bond here, here, or here. So now we have to go through the answer choices. If we look at A and D, the only difference is that one is saying that we're bonding para to the methylene group, while the other is saying we're bonding meta to the methylene group. We know that this is an ortho para activator, so we know it's not going to be bonding meta. So our answer for this is A, because we will be bonding on the acetyl group over here, para to the methylene group. All right, I will leave that up for a second. And I'm gonna keep scrolling. All right, I'm not gonna mess this up this time. I'm gonna let you guys take a screenshot of this page first. All 
Okay, hopefully you guys already got a screenshot. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so the major product or products of the following reaction is what? So we see that we are having a Br2 FeBr3. We should already know what that reaction is. It is a halogenation. So now we got to look at our two rings once again. So like I always like to do, I split it in half. So the ring on the left has this group here, which if you guys can't tell, it is a carbonyl group once again. So this is going to be a meta deactivator. The ring on the right has a CH2 group. That CH2 group is a ortho para activator. So remember when we were doing these problems, I know we typically didn't do it with two benzene rings, but the same rule applies. We always will follow the more activating group. So with that in mind, do we think we're going to bond it to the left ring or the right ring? If you said left ring, you are, I mean, right ring, you're a hundred percent right. Sorry, I misspoke. We will not be bonding to this ring. So any of the answer choices that gives you a BR on the left ring is already wrong. So one is out, two is out, three is out. So that means A, B, C, and if we read E, equal amounts of one and two, that is also incorrect. So that leaves us with D, which is four. If you guys actually want to see that, we can go ahead and do that. So we will be bonding the BR on this side. This is the way it directs. As we can see here, the CH2 and the BR are bonded para to each other. So that checks out. All right, 56, it's basically asking the same thing, just a different ring this time. So go ahead and identify what you're doing. So we have H2SO4 over SO3. It can be flip-flop, guys, don't worry about it. Um, but basically those are your two reagents, so we know this is going to be a sulfonation. I hope I spelled that right. Spelling is not my strong point. <laughs> um, and then our next step is to split the rings. So in this case, we are splitting it here. Notice how it's not drawn the same as the one up here. No big deal. It's the same thing. This is a CH2 and this is a carbonyl. So we know this guy here is a meta deactivator and we know this ch2 here is an ortho para activator once again we know that we will have to follow the rule of we follow the activator so we know we are not bonding anything to the left ring so we could go ahead and cross this guy out so any of the answer choices that gives it to you on the left ring, you can already cross out. So we know it's not one, we know it's not two, and we know it's not three. So A, B, and C are out. So now we're stuck between D and E. Let's go ahead and draw in our directing arrows over here. Those are the three places we can bond, ortho and para. So let's look at our answer choices. We are left with four and five. In four, we are bonded one, four, meaning we are bonded para, and in five, we are bonded one, three. That means it is bonded meta. We know we are not bonding meta, so our answer is going to be four once again. All right, I will zoom out and let you guys take a picture of this page. And I'm going to keep scrolling. Feel free to rewind and pause the video if you didn't get a screenshot. Okay. You guys can go ahead and grab a screenshot of this page as well. And I'm going to go ahead and start. Sorry if my voice is a little bit rough. Um, I haven't drank a crap ton of water today. So, yeah. Anyways. So now we are actually... Um, we are back to what would we expect to be the major product from the following reaction. So this guy is basically like the multi-substitution, um, that's not the word I was looking for. 
multiple substituted benzene rings, so meaning we just have more than one group on the benzene ring already. So we are doing Br2, FeBr3. We know this is a halogenation. So now we need to identify the two groups we have present. COOH we know is a carboxylic acid. Yeah, carboxylic acid. And we know since it's bonded to the carbon, this guy is going to be a meta deactivator. Then we have the SO3H group, which is yet again another meta deactivator. So if we draw out their arrows on where they direct, one, two, three, one, two, three. SO3H is also going to direct 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3. So our arrows line up over here. So that is where we're going to, I'm sorry, <laughs> that is where we're going to bond the BR. So look for the answer choice that has it bonded over here. And in this case, that means our answer is 3. So our answer is C. So we are doing the same thing for the next problem. Once again, we also have a halogenation here. So now we need to identify our two groups we have. This is an O2, so we know it's a meta deactivator. And we still have the SO3H from the same pro from the last problem which we also know is a meta deactivator. So if we drew our arrows, this one would direct those two places, and then our SO3H would direct here and here. Once again, the arrows line up over here, and since both of the arrows line up there, that is also where we're gonna be bonding on the BR. So just like the last problem, our answer to this is three or C. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a second to screenshot this. And sorry if you hear the wind behind me, it's really windy where I am right now. And this is the quietest house, I mean quietest room in the house, so my bad. All right. So go ahead and grab a screenshot of this really quick. All right. So once again, we are doing what would we expect to be the major product from the following reaction. We have Br2FeBr3 again, meaning this is a halogenation. Once again, we have these rings over here, so let's go ahead and split that in half as usual, like so. So over here, we have a carbonyl group, so we know this is going to be a meta deactivator. And on the right, we have this oxygen. Remember when it's bonded to this oxygen of a carbonyl group, we are going to call that an orthopara activator. It is not going to be a deactivator. So once again, we need to follow the rule of we follow the strongest activator. And since this guy is an activator and that one's a deactivator, we will follow this one, meaning we do not bond anything onto the left ring. So go ahead and cross out the left ring and any answer choices that gives you something bonded to the left ring. So one, two, five are out, meaning answer choices A, B, and E are out. So now we're stuck between three and four. Let's go ahead and just look at them. In three, we see that this BR is bonded one, three to this oxygen, meaning this is bonded meta. We do not want meta, so we know that one is out now. We want it to be bonded para, so we check out four just in case. Br is bonded one, four to our oxygen, so that guy checks out, and our answer is D. Okay. So, now we have this guy over here. Questions like this do appear, so definitely know some of your naming. Um, so it's asking about the monobromination. All that means is we're going to be doing this same thing, Br2, Fe, Br3, and only bonding one bromine on. And they give us the starting molecule, which is meta-bonded dichlorobenzene. So 
you'll have a benzene ring and then you just need to draw on the chlorines meta bonded to this benzene so a cl up here and then count three one two three and a cl here so this is our starting which is a meta dichloro benzene so we are adding on a br group i mean just a br so we need to tell us we need to identify what our cls are our cls are both ortho para deactivators remember our halogens are ortho para deactivators or weak deactivators so they both direct ortho para so let me go ahead and draw in arrows i realize i probably didn't do this in the best way so let me give these guys two separate colors All right, so for this CL up here, it is going to want to direct here, here, or here. And then for this CL over here, it's going to want to direct here, here, or here. Our arrows line up in literally all the same places, but be very careful with this problem, guys. Remember, when we have two groups that are like this and we have an arrow between them where we can bond technically the arrows are pointing there we have steric hindrance so this one will not work because of sterics so do not bond anything here so go ahead and cross out one because that does not make any sense if we are talking about substitution so one is not one of the answers. So now let's look at two and three. So two, we do have it bonded para to this CL and ortho to this one. So that one's fine, all good. And then let's look at this one. This one is not bonded ortho or para to either of our CLs. It is actually bonded meta to both CLs. Notice how we have one, three, and then we have one, three. We do not want meta, it is an ortho para deactivator. So three is not an option either. So that means our answer for this one is B. Sorry, that was a really long-winded explanation. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and grab a screenshot of that. And I will move on, okay. So these are just more of the same exact questions, you know, we have multiple things, we have multiple groups on the ring. Um, I'm not going to go through these because you guys should be able to do them. So I'm just going to give you guys the answers to these. So go ahead and grab a screenshot of it now, pause the video before I give you the answers. But the answer for 65 is A and the one for 68 is C. So go ahead and grab a screenshot of that. And I will keep going. Um, once again, more of those same problems. So this is a mononitration. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of help with this, but you guys should be able to do it on your own. So a mononitration means we have the HNO3 over the HNO3 with the H, sorry, I'm writing this really small, so let me go over here. Our reagents are HNO3 with H2SO4, and we're saying mononitration, so we are only bonding one NO2 group on, and then we're starting out with meta dichlorobenzene, just like before, so that molecule looks like so. Cl. CL. And then you guys should be able to do the reaction after that. Um, but I will give you guys the answers. So 71 is B and then 74 is A. So go ahead and grab a screenshot of this. Okay. Um, more of the same 
thing for 78, but I will go over both of these just because this one's a new problem. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. Go ahead and get a screenshot before I start drawing all over this. Sorry, the screen rotated. I uh, have to plug in my iPad. It's dying. <laughs> okay. So the major product of the following reaction is just like the other one. So we want to identify the two groups that we have on there and then see how we will be bonding on our SO3H group. So remember, this is a sulfonation. Once again, I cannot spell. <laughs> um, so... The CLs are both ortho para deactivators. That's not how you, that's not, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and this one is also an ortho para deactivator. So the top chlorine is going to want to bond here, here, or here. And then the other one will direct in these same exact locations. But look at the answer choices carefully once again. So one, even though we do have arrows directing there, remember we will likely not bond it here due to sterics, so we know one is not going to be the answer. Remember, major products, so that one usually doesn't happen because of sterics, so I will put it right here next to it and put sterics and an arrow there. Um, our second one checks out. It is bonded para to our top CL and then ortho to our next CL. And then three is bonded once again meta to both of our CLs, so one, three. So we know that our answer for this one is B. Um, and then for 92, so read these questions carefully. Most of the time they will just be a Friedel Crafts reaction, but definitely read it carefully. So we are dealing with this. This is just an alkyl group of the CL, so an alkyl halide. And then it says anhydrous aluminum chloride. Do not let those words baffle you. This simply means ALCL3. So if you see that on the exam, do not freak out. It just means ALCL3. And then this is our alkyl group that we're adding on. Let me attempt to draw this. I cannot promise it's going to look great, but I'm going to attempt to draw it. So here is our chicken foot. C, C, H, 2, C, L. Hey, I didn't do bad that time. Okay. So, remember, this is a Friedel Crafts alkylation. This alkylation can undergo rearrangement. So, in this case, we will have the positive charge there. Remember, since it can undergo rearrangement, we want to make it more stable. So, we will shift it over. So for 92, we're going to do a methyl shift. So we will take one of the methyls from over here and we will shift it over here. So the plus charge moves over here and then we are left with this compound here. So now we just need to add that onto a benzene because it does say we're just reacting with a benzene. So in one, if we look at it, we didn't change it. We, we still have the same exact thing. So we know that one is not the answer. Let's look at two. This doesn't make sense. We did not have just a long chain. So that one is also not the right answer. Let's look at this guy here. So it kind of looks like it could be it, but notice how we have the plus charge here. So we'd actually have two bonds coming off from here. So three is also not it. Four kind of looks like it could be it. But remember, we still have two other bonds. So this is like if we drew in the plus charge here, we would have the plus charge, we would have one bond and then another bond. Hold on, I might have messed this one up. No, I didn't. Okay. Our answer here is five. Ooh, sorry. Our answer here is five. And the reason for that, let me draw this out because it will probably make more sense if I drew it out. So here's our benzene. I'm going to draw it with a circle in the middle. 
So remember when we take this guy here, the plus charge ends up forming a bond to the benzene. So then we have one group, two group, and then the third one is the one that is making this portion here. And that is how we end up with five. I'm sorry I did not explain that the best way, but hopefully you guys can see that. This is like where the plus charge was. Notice how the plus charge still had two other groups, so one, two, and then it had this ethyl, so an ethyl. So two methyls and an ethyl. Two methyls and an ethyl. Okay, maybe that makes more sense now. Let me go ahead and zoom out so you guys can get a screenshot of this page. Okay, so 93 and 95, go ahead and grab a screenshot of that. We are almost done with chapter 15 practice problems, I promise. We are almost there. All right, so let's look at what we have. Once again, we are reacting with a benzene with this huge alkyl halide and then anhydrous aluminum chloride. Remember, this just means AlCl3. And then... This is still a friedel craft alkylation. All right, so they really did want to trip you up on these. They really did. Since it's still an alkylation, we are still going to be able to undergo rearrangement. So we will take our cyclopentane with its group plus charge over here. You guys remember from Orgo 1, we can do something called a ring expansion. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Basically, the carbon over here will basically open up, oop, open up and create another bond. I probably didn't draw that the best way, but basically what this ends up being is we create a cyclohexane with a plus charge here. So now we know that we have a cyclohexane and that is what we're bonding onto the benzene. So let's look at all of these and see which one gives us a cyclohexane. One does not. Two does not. These are both cyclopentanes. This guy here, we would not just pop it onto the benzene, so this one definitely is not right. And then, for some reason, five decided to put another methyl group on the benzene, which doesn't make sense either, so that one is also out. Four is the only one that has a hexane on there. And so that is our answer. The answer to this one is D. All right, so for 95, we are doing the same thing. Notice how we just have a cyclobutane instead of a cyclopentane as our starter. So once again, AlCl3. Now we have this box with a plus charge. We will do the same expansion. And when we do that expansion, we will end up with a cyclopentane this time. All right, sorry, there we go. Cyclopentane with a plus. So now we know this is what we are going to end up bonding onto the benzene. And so we will want to look for the ones that gives us a cyclopentane bonded on. If we start out with number one, we already see this is the right answer because there we go, there's our pentane, and then here's our benzene. So we know one is the answer, which is A. If we wanted to go through the rest, we could. This one, we didn't do any shift, which remember, when we are doing a friedel craft alkylation, if a shift is possible to make a more stable carbocation, we will always undergo the shift. And what I mean by that is, notice how this was a primary carbocation? We did this ring expansion to make it a secondary carbocation. So, 2 is not it. 3, like I said, didn't make sense before, still doesn't make sense now. But, um, 4 over here has a cyclohexane. Remember, we only formed a cyclopentane this time because we started out with a cyclobutane. So this one is not it. And then five did that same thing where it awkwardly added a methyl onto the benzene, which we wouldn't do. So that is also out of the picture. All right, I will let you guys take a screenshot of this. Okay. 
Okay, so once again, we have one more of these problems, so hopefully you guys can do them by now. But just in case, we can go through this one. Sorry, I'm a little congested. Um, anhydrous aluminum chloride. I will always point this out to you guys. AlCl3. Um, this is still a Frito Crafts alkylation because we do not have an acetyl group. So Fc alkyl. I forgot to let you guys take a screenshot of this page, but I will. Af I'll let you take a screenshot now because I didn't write all that much on this yet. And, okay, I'm going to continue. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I always forget to let you guys screenshot. I don't know why. Just, it's weird. All right, so we have a plus charge here. Because I got rid of that CL, so the plus charge ends up here, not on this one. So, we will do another shift. So now, this is where some people get confused because they think they should just do a methyl shift. We're actually going to do a ring expansion as well for this problem. So we will actually end up with this. So the reason why we are doing the ring expansion instead of a methyl shift is because notice how I will show you what would happen if we just did a methyl shift. Had we done a methyl shift, we would have only ended up with a secondary carbocation. But when we did the ring expansion, we were able to make it into a tertiary carbocation. So the tertiary carbocation is more stable than the secondary, so we are going to want to make the tertiary. So that is why we do not follow this path. So now we see we're going to have a cyclopentane with a methyl being bonded onto our benzene. So let's go ahead and go through them and see what we would do. And if we went to one, we already see we have our cyclopentane with a methyl. So that guy is going to be our answer. So the answer to this one is A. Um, and feel free to work through the other answer choices if you need to. Um, but yeah, okay. So... Now the next ones are kind of conceptual and basically as long as you know which ones are your meta directors, ortho directors, your meta strong deactivators, your ortho para deactivators, and your ortho para activators, you should be fine for these problems. So which of the following is not a meta directing substituent when present on a benzene ring? Don't worry about the part when it says when present on a benzene ring, just know. We are looking for something that is not a meta-directing substituent. So one of these guys is not a meta-directing substituent, and you just need to identify which one it is. So, CO2H, that is a carboxylic acid. We know that is a meta-directing substituent, so that is not it. We have a... Triple bonded nitrogen to a carbon. We do know that that one is also a meta directing substituent, so that is also not it. Rn, so this is a NCH3 to um, NCH3 3. This is basically that NR3 group, so on the sheet you might see it as NR3. So basically they just put the CH3 as the R group for this one. No big deal. But we do know it's a meta-directing, so that is not it. We also know that NO2 is a meta-directing as well, so that leaves us with A. Let's check it out. We have an NHCOCH3. If you guys do recall, that is definitely an orthopara activator. So the answer to this one is A. And the next one is the same thing. It is asking which one is not a meta-directing substituent. So let's go through them again. So CO2H is C triple bonded N is NCH33, which is just NR3, is, and NO2 is as well. So that means that our double bonded nitrogen to oxygen is going to be a ortho para director. That is going to be the one that is not a meta-directing substituent. Okay. 
I will let you guys get a screenshot of this page and then we will go on. We are in the home stretch of finishing up chapter 15. This recording is probably really long already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna keep going. All right, go ahead and take a screenshot of this page. Um, 107 and 108 are just like the ones that we did on the other page. It's asking about electrophilic aromatic substitution, which basically means we are doing a substitution onto a benzene ring. So the difference between those problems and this one is that this one is asking for which of the following is not an ortho para deactivator so now we're looking for ones that are not an ortho para direct di director yeah so we're looking for a meta director okay so let's go ahead and take a look at this so we know that nh2 is actually our strongest activator so that guy is an ortho para um director Fluorine. Fluorine is a halogen. And remember, our halogens are deactivators, but they are orthopara deactivators because they are weak. They are not a strong deactivator. So these guys are an orthopara director. <laughs> CH3 is simply an alkyl group, so we know that alkyl groups are orthopara directors. And then OCH3. That is definitely on the chart. I know we went over it before. Um, that is also an orthopara director. And that leaves us with CCL3. CCL3 means that one is going to end up being a meta deactivator or a meta director. All right. The next one's asking the same thing. It's asking for not an orthopara director. I'm going to zoom through this one a little bit faster because once again, it gives us the same answer choices as before. So NH2 is an orthopara director, fluorine is as well, CH3 is as well, and OCH3 is as well. And that leaves us with A, which is SO3H, which you guys should know by now, SO3H is a meta director. Okay, so 112 is kind of more of a conceptual one. So it's asking what feature is common to all meta directing groups. So this had to do with that thing that we drew where we are drawing out all of their um, resonance structures. So the answer to this, if you guys don't recall, go ahead and flip back to that. The answer to this is A. So the atom directly attached to the ring has a full or well-developed partial positive charge. So if you look at all the meta-directing groups, the one that is bonded to the benzene ring so in this case, it could be like the, let me think of some directors, um, our carbonyl group, the C with the O and then the OH, this carbon here has a partial positive charge. And if we did that again with the ketone, I'm just going to make it a CCH3, that is also going to have a partial positive charge. And that is all they mean by that. So all di meta directing groups will have a partial positive charge on the atom that is directly bonded to the ring. Okay. So this is what we were talking about when we were talking about like reactivity. So know the chart in order of reactivity. So know that our very, very strong deactivators are going to be the least reactive, and then our really strong activators are going to be the most reactive. So definitely memorize that chart, guys, if you haven't already. So it's asking to arrange the following compounds in order of decreasing reactivity in electrophilic substitution. So we want the most reactive to the least reactive, because it's asking for decrease. So let's go through these. So we know that this guy is a, that one is a meta deactivator. So we know that's going to probably be less reactive. Um, two, we know is an ortho para activator. So that's probably going to be more reactive. So let me actually go ahead and write those in. Meta deac, op -ac. This guy, remember, it's a halogen. So it's an ortho para deactivator. NO2 is also a meta deactivator. 
And then our alkyl group is an ortho para activator. Now, if you look at that chart that we gave you guys, it has these in order of reactivity. So go ahead and refer to that. But basically, we know that these two are going to come before the rest of them because these, those are our two activators. So anyone that doesn't start with either two or five, you could go ahead and cross out. So this one, C starts with four, D starts with three, and E starts with four again. So now we're stuck between A and B. All we simply need to do is tell, are we going to want to start with two or five? We are going to want to start with two, and it's because two is an orthopair activator that is more reactive than an alkyl. So our answer to this is going to be B. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys screenshot this page in case you want it, and yeah. Okay, so hopefully you guys all got a screenshot of that. I'm going to let you guys take a screenshot of this. Once again, as you guys can see, there's one conceptual one, which is 115, and the other two are just talking about reactivity. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So 115 is talking about a feature. So remember how up here we said a common feature to all meta-directing groups? So now we're acting, asking about... <laughs> I can't speak today. Um, we are asking for a feature found in all ortho-para ones. So a feature found in all ortho-para directing groups, if we looked at that resonance that we did before in the exam review handout along with the SI one. Um, what they all have in common is that they all, the group has the ability to delocalize the positive charge of the rhenium ion. So all that means is that the group can literally push around that positive charge to make it, well, delocalize it basically. So it's able to do that resonance and just push it all around the arenium ion before it regains its stability as a benzene ring. So if you don't really like, if you can't wrap your head around that, it's okay. Um, you can memorize this one. Um, but yeah. Okay. So 129 is asking, which of the following compounds would be most reactive towards electrophilic substitution? So basically, which one of these groups that is bonded onto the benzene is going to be the most reactive. So let's go ahead and look at them. So we know OH, once again, I'm sorry for the wind. Um, OH is a ortho para activator. CH3 is also an ortho para activator. Bromine is a halogen, meaning it is an ortho para deactivator. That is not how you spell it. Deactivator. This is an aldehyde. Um, I know it's written CHO, but if you know it as COH, same thing. It's just a carbon bonded to an oxygen. And then, uh, yeah. Um, so this guy is a meta deactivator. And then this is the NO2, which is also a meta deactivator. So we know all of our deactivators are not going to be as reactive as our activators. So we can cross all of these guys out. <laughs> cool. All right. So now we're, just, we're stuck between one and two. So if you remember your reactivity table, is an OH or a CH3 more reactive? You said an OH. You are 100% right. The answer for this one is A. So now we are given the same exact groups, same exact compounds, but we are asking which one is going to be the least reactive. So least reactive means literally all the way, if I'm looking at the paper, all the way to the left, <laughs> or basically our strongest deactivator. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to go ahead and write out all of these again, because that's going to be a lot of writing when it's already up there. These two are activators, so we know that's not going to be it. 
We know BR is an orthopara deactivator or a weak deactivator, so that's not going to be it. So now we're stuck between the aldehyde and then the NO2 group. Look at your chart, or if you memorized it, um, imagine it in your head, <laughs> um, and tell me which one is going to be least reactive. I'm going to put in that pause there. If you saw it, Sorry, if you said NO2, you're 100% correct. NO2 is going to be our least reactive because it is our strongest deactivator out of the bunch. Well, out of these two. Okay, so go ahead and grab a screenshot of this page and then we will keep going. I think we only have about like four more problems for chapter 15 and then we'll move on to 16. Okay, go ahead and take a screenshot of this one as well. Okay, so 131 is asking which of the following compounds would be most reactive to ring bromination. So, we are doing a bromination, so we don't need to worry about the weird Friedel-Crafts rules where we can't do it if there's a strong deactivator or NH2. This is just a bromination. So, basically, we are just going to be looking at the one that is most reactive. So, out of all these groups, take a second and think about it. Which one is our most reactive? If you said NH2, you are 100% correct. So the answer for this one is E. So remember, I don't know if this is going to help you remember it, but for Frida Crafts, remember we can't have the NH2 because it is so reactive, it's going to act as a base. So if that helps you, then go ahead and remember it that way because NH2 is our most reactive um, group that we will be seeing. In this in this set of chapters <laughs> at least okay um yeah I'm gonna keep going I need to stop blabbling okay so it's asking which of the following carbocations would be the most stable so remember we want something that's either secondary or tertiary tertiary is preferable um, we don't want anything primary so let's look at a our plus charges all the way on the end on this CH2 so we know that is going to be a primary one, so we're not going to want that one. Um, let me just make sure. Okay, and then this one has it up here on the CH2, which once again, we do not want. That means that's going to be a primary. If we look here at C, it's on this carbon here. So it has this carbon is attached to a CH3, another CH3, and then a CH2. That means this guy is tertiary. So, we can't rule that guy out just yet. Alright, so, then let's look at this guy here. We have a, sorry, I misspoke really quick. We have the plus charge on a carbon here, and this carbon is bonded to a CH on one side and a CH2 on the other. So, that's a secondary. We already saw a tertiary, so we know we don't want this guy either. So, now we look at E. E is bonded to a phenyl and then a CH2. So in case you guys can't visualize this one, let me draw this one out for you. C, okay, CH, CH2, CH, CH3, okay. This guy looks like this, and the positive charge is here. For C, it's going to look like this. That is a horrible looking benzene. I am so sorry about that. Let me redraw that. Let's try this again. All right, that's a better looking benzene. CH2, CH2. That is what that guy looks like. So which one do you guys think is going to be more stable? Do we think it's going to be C or do we think it's going to be E? So the answer to this is actually E. And the reason for that is because this plus charge is literally part of this ring here. So because of that, we can push it around the ring and get more. It can delocalize a positive charge. Just like we were saying for... This guy here, where we were talking about the ortho-para directing groups, 
it is able to delocalize the positive charge. So it is able to do the same thing by pushing it around over here. So that is why E is our answer for this guy. I know that's a little confusing because it kind of looks like it's a secondary, but because of that phenyl ring there, we are able to call that our most stable molecule. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys take a screenshot of that really quick. And I will now continue. <laughs> All right, go ahead and take a screenshot of this. These are our last two problems from the chapter 15 tra practice problems. And then we will move on to chapter 16. We do not have that many for chapter 16, so we should be able to fly through those pretty fast. Okay, once again, we are back at these synthesis reactions. Dr. West loves to give these, which is kind of, you know, a pain. But, um, so we want to find a good synthesis to form this compound. So as you can see, all three of these are starting out with a benzene, right? So we all, so we know we're starting out with this guy. And then we have to add on these two groups. We have a C, CH3, 3, and then an O, a carbonyl group, or a ketone. Yeah, ketone. Is it a ketone? No, that's an acetyl group. My bad. Okay. So, let's look at our answer choices first. As you guys can see, we are going to have to do a Friedel Crafts alkylation for both of them. So we're adding on this from a Friedel Crafts and we're adding on this from another Friedel Crafts. So, which one do you think would have to go first? Notice how this one is an acylation and this one is an alkylation. So, do we have to do the alkylation first or the acylation first? If you guys said alkylation first, you are right. And the reason for that is because if we did the acylation first, we would bond on this group here. And what is this group? It is a carbonyl, meaning it's going to be a strong deactivator. And we cannot do a Friedel Crafts reaction when there's a strong deactivator already present. So we know we're going to have to start out with the alkylation to bond this group on first. And since that is just a ortho para activator, we can bond on the acetyl group after. I hope that makes sense. So basically, we're going to want to do the CH3 CCL over ALCL3 and then form this. Sorry that my handwriting looks like poop. We are going to want, oh, I totally did not. I missed a carbon. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, because this guy is technically bonded on this way. So, this group here, we can still continue the reaction and add on the CH3CCL group because this guy is simply a ortho para activator. So, if you follow along the way that they drew it on their molecule, I will draw it the same way. So, if we flipped this, if we bonded on this group first, notice how this guy is a deactivator. And since it's a deactivator, we cannot bond on the other group because they're both Friedel crafts. So this is a FC alkyl, and this is a FC acyl. So that is why our answer for this one is B. I'm sorry that was super long-winded, but a lot of people get confused on this one. So, yeah. All right, so 56, if we, looked at, if we look at 56, so we see that we want to do 
We start out with a benzene and we want to add on this CH2CH3, so we want to add on an ethyl and then a chlorine. So let's look at our answer choices. So A, the reason why A doesn't make sense is because, oh wait, I lied. I lied. My bad. So A makes sense, so this guy would add on the alkyl group first. So I wish I had more room for this, but I really don't. So we would start out with the benzene. I'm just going to draw it like this, and we can just bond on the ethyl here. And then if we carry through the Cl2 and then the FeCl3, we need to look at directing effects. So this guy is going to be an ortho para activator, right? So because of that, it's going to want to direct here, here, or here. Let's look at the products that we're trying to form. These guys are bonded meta to each other, right? So it's bonded 1, 3. Since this guy will not want it to direct to be 1, 3, we know this guy cannot be an answer choice. So A is already out because we would end up bonding ortho para or as an activator. I mean an ortho para... I'm sorry, let me say that again. We know this one won't work because we are going to want to bond the CL on ortho or para. Sorry. Okay. So then we have B. B, we are still kind of doing the same thing. So we start out with a benzene, right? This time we're bonding on the CL first. And then they're saying let's do the CH3, CH2Cl over the AlCl3. So what is CL? CL is an ortho para deactivator. We can still do this reaction. I know you guys are like, oh, it's a deactivator. Remember, this is a weak deactivator. We can only not do the friedel crafts reaction if we have a strong deactivator. So this is the weak one. We can still carry through the reaction. But CL is an ortho para deactivator, so it's still going to direct in the same places. And remember, we want our final product to be meta. This one will not give us meta, so this one is also not an answer choice. So now let's look at C. So C is saying, instead of doing a Friedel Crafts alkylation, we are going to do an acylation. So, benzene ring, pop on this guy here, and then we are going to treat it with Cl2, Fe, Cl3. This time, this guy is a ortho I mean, not an ortho pair, a meta deactivator, remember, because this guy is a carbonyl. So it will direct meta. So when we bond on the Cl, it will bond meta to our group. So I'm just going to draw the Cl bonded on here. So a lot of people see the zinc and they freak out. The zinc simply takes off this group right here. So all it's going to do is this. It's going to say bye-bye, bye-bye to this guy. So we're just going to scratch that guy out. And that is what we end up with. We end up with a ethyl and then a Cl. And they're bonded meta. Is that what we wanted? Yes, it is. So this is our answer. So some people might see D and be like, that could also be one, right? Because, you know, we're doing the same steps. So notice how we start out with a benzene. And then we put on this group. The issue with this one is that we are treating it with zinc mercury before we put on the Cl2. So this guy is going to turn our acetyl group into just a normal ethyl. And when we do that, we end up with the same problem we had before, where this guy is now an ortho para activator, so it's going to direct in the ortho para position, meaning we will not get the meta position that we want. And that is why D is not the answer. That was really long-winded, but I hope that clarifies some things for you guys. And that is the end of chapter 15 practice problems. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys take a screenshot of this. 
and I'm probably going to start a new recording for 16.